Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the December 13th, 2022 Town of Lake Clark Shores Town Council meeting. Can I get a roll call, please? Mayor Paul Shalhoub. Present. Vice Mayor Robert Shalhoub. Here. President Pro Tem Gregory Freebold. Here. Council Member Valteen Rodriguez. Here. Council Member Robert Gonzalez. <clears throat> Thank you, Mary. If we could all stand for a moment of silence. In memory of Michael Peone, uh, died at 87 years young. He was our assistant chief's uh, father-in-law. And Dora Francis Langley, 79 years young, our Robert Paulin's grandmother. May their memories be eternal. Father Peter, would, would you be so kind as to lead us in the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach the celebration of the nativity of thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born in a cave and lay in a manger, choosing to appear to us in meekness and humility, we pray that we too may approach thee in meekness and humility of heart. As thy word was made manifest to us all, may we too continually be examples of thy love. Thy son was illumined by the star from the east, guiding the magi and shepherds to the place of thy birth to offer praise. Thou art the true light of the world for us all to see. May we begin to see the world in the light of the understanding that is given to us. Grant peace to our lives, health, and the furtherance of all that is good during this nativity season and the year to come. Amen. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Father. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. All right, I take a motion. So move. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries. I take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. All right, we are on Mr. Penske here. Not yet. He might be stuck in traffic. <laughs> Didn't this happen last year? I think it did. I know I talked to him today, so I know he knows it's tonight. Yeah. He gave himself about an hour and 20 minutes to come up here and rush our traffic from Miami. I don't think that's enough time. No. So why don't we go ahead and move on into the quasi judicial proceedings and then we'll come back after that to uh, the legislative priorities presented by Mr. Richard Pinsky. Any objections? All right. So we're going to. Do the quasi judicial proceedings now. This is for 8060 Westlake Drive variance request. All right. Mr. Sheck, can you do the presentation, please? Yes. As far as the, of the request and the recommendation by the zoning board. On November 16th of this year, the zoning board of adjustments uh, heard a case requesting a variance. The applicants, Joseph, Cassandra, and Joseph and Cassandra Shear. Uh, this is for a 10 foot setback in the side yard. And the variance request was to install and approve an already installed existing trellis that is located three and a half feet from the side property line. The Zoning Board of Adjustment, as required by Section 125-69 of the Code of Ordinances, found that special conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land, that a literal enforcement of the provisions of the Zoning Code would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties, that special conditions and circumstances do not result from the action of the applicant, 
and that granting the variance will not confer on the applicant any special privileges that are denied other lands. Uh, and so the zoning board granted a variance of six and a half feet <clears throat> for the trellis uh, from the side property line. It was, it's my understanding that they also uh, applied some conditions to that approval, but I don't see that in the uh, order. My understanding is that it, the trellis could not be uh, enclosed. Oh yeah, here it is uh, under the order. Uh, with the conditions that the trellis will never have a roof or sides. You have to make those similar findings of fact. You can't just simply approve the action of the zoning board. Uh, you can approve and accept their order if and when you find that the conditions and requirements of Chapter 125-69 have been met and the applicant uh, should present testimony uh, concerning that matter. And thank you, Charlie. But if the request is to go forward, the town council can adopt the recommendations and totality from the zoning board yes you may okay thank you and mr joseph and cassandra shearer i guess that we will have to swear can you all come up and and present i don't see the applicants here mr mayor okay well Next. that's unique um, <laughs> I don't think we've ever had this I, before. I will say I think that we've gotten overly lax in the presentation. This is a public hearing. It is a quasi-judicial hearing. I don't know how, except for the fact that you can consider what the Zoning Board of Adjustment did, uh, but for the fact that the Zoning Board has issued an order, you could not enter an order tonight because there's no testimony. You can accept the testimony of the, uh, or the, uh, the written findings of fact and order of the zoning board and grant it. But in the future, my recommendation is if the applicant isn't here, it's denied. Can we table it, Charlie? You, yes, you may. I would prefer to table it. So moved. Second. All in it's, favor? It's impossible to defend the case if it's challenged in court uh, because there's no testimony on the record. Got it. <clears throat> I would just rather table it. Give them an opportunity. Maybe they just didn't understand <coughs> that there was a need to show up today. All right. Where'd Richard go? Oh, they, I don't know how I missed you. Welcome, Mr. Pinsky. Would you be so kind as to come on up and uh, present on our legislative priorities and what we have to look forward to this coming legislative session. Copy of House Bill 37. Richard Pinsky, Chairman, Commissioners, Council Members, uh, Mr. Manager, and Mr. Attorney. Um, Mr. Mr. Pinsky, that little device right there is a remote control that will advance uh, your presentation. Right away, Chairman. And where do I point it to make sure it works? Uh, there you go. Okay. Um, so thank you for the opportunity, and I see you have a copy of House Bill 37, so we'll talk about that in a minute, although I don't think it's uh, going to be um, a big issue, but... Um, I believe you're holding it upside down. There you go. Oh, good, okay. Uh, so who are our state uh, lawmakers? We've had a little bit of a change. Representative David Silvers is still our House member. He is a senior. This is going to be his last two, two sessions. <coughs> he, uh, he should be able to be quite successful as he um, is now holds a senior membership on committees and has a great deal of respect in the House. Uh, we have a new state senator. With redistricting, Lori Berman is no longer our senator. Uh, it's now Bobby Powell. 
and um, this entirely the the uh, town is entirely within Senator Powell's district now. So that is new. I've already talked to Senator Powell about uh, the town of Lake Clark Shores. He wants to come present, speak to the council, and wants to spend time and understand a little bit more. Um, I basically gave him an overview of what we've done in the past and what we may come up in the future. Um, and I was in Tallahassee yesterday and, and spoke to him again about it in the hall. Uh, I apologize. I just came at um, 70 miles per hour, Chief. I didn't go over the, the <laughs> limit. Uh, but I did come in hot. <laughs> um, so here's our uh, Palm Beach County delegation. Uh, we did uh, we did uh, pick up two new members. Representative Matt Wilhite is no longer in the uh, House. Representative Catherine Waldron uh, now replaced Representative Wilhite, and uh, Representative Emily Slosberg is no longer a member. And we now have Republican Representative Peggy Gossett Seidman. And so we actually have the delegation is um, becoming um, not quite 50-50, but definitely a little more red. Senator Tina Polsky is now the delegation uh, chair and runs the Palm Beach County delegation. Uh, coming dates to remember this week, uh, special session, but they're also having committee meetings, committee assignments are out. Uh, so uh, chairs are getting training, new members are getting training. We have 40 new legislators, 30 new Republicans, and 10 new um, um, uh, Democrats. There's an overwhelming majority in the Florida legislature of Republican to Democrat. They have surpassed the two-thirds mark, so procedurally uh, <coughs> that um, further weakens and erodes the power of the, of the Democrat Party. Um, we're going to have a busy couple of months coming up. They, this is a little more aggressive uh, committee week schedule than usual. And March 7th, of course, a regular session convenes. Palm Beach County Day is March 8th, which always it works right around the opening day. And then the League of Cities, which I know many of you usually will, will travel to Tallahassee and attend as well, is April 3rd through the 6th. The last day of session is um, May 5th. And we're doing the happy dance is what that is. <laughs> the, um, so what I want to talk about tonight, and I know you want to talk about as well, we're getting to the place where we have to decide on what we're going to be uh, requesting, if anything. As you know, uh, last couple of uh, years, we've had good success on projects, whether it's uh, the, uh, uh, funding for re uh, bridge repair, uh, we've gotten some uh, uh, water uh, grant money, uh, legislative funding money. We got our uh, local bill done as far as the annexation. So we want to keep it going. You know, let's not slow down. Uh, we have been playing in the Department of Environmental Protection sandbox for all intents and purposes. There is FDOT. There are other places to go. There's historical. Uh, so there are definitely other, silo, uh, other silos. But we've, um, in the town, we've basically been focused on uh, environmental protection. And that includes the wastewater grant program, the, uh, which is basically the um, septic, uh, some stormwater, but mostly, mostly uh, septic and uh, water quality uh, issues. The Resilient Florida Grant Program, which is the flooding and uh, a lot of stormwater uh, mitigation. And then the revolving loan program, which is the very low interest loan for projects, uh, mostly water projects and infrastructure projects. It's usually um, um, Dan, uh, you no know, one and one percent, one one and a half percent, something like that. Yeah, cheap. And um, and then the FERDAP, and we've had success in uh, in the FERDAP. We had uh, funding uh, last year out of the FERDAP, which was fully funded. So now uh, we, uh, so while those grant monies are going on, uh, we now come to what the ask is. So we'll be asking Representative Silvers and Representative Powell uh, 
The forms are still the same when you submit a request for House and Senate. However, this time, this session, we are no longer going to be using actual bill numbers. As you recall in the past, you would complete the form and then you were assigned a bill, a number, you do an attestation form, and then your bill would have to get heard in committee to be eligible for budget consideration. Uh, fortunately, Speaker Renner uh, is uh, streamlining it, sort of going back to the way we were. There still will be a form. Um, good news. Uh, it's going to be up to uh, the pocket of the legislators. Bad news, it's going to be up to the pocket of the legislators. So while we streamline the process, it does put it back behind um, closed doors somewhat. The, uh, it can be any project category, so you know, think outside the box. Uh, there is always a local investment match somewhere around 50%, but it, that's, that's not a hard, fast rule uh, either. And uh, so... The Senate is a, not quite the way the House does it, but the, Senate, the House is going to have their deadline of February 13th. So we, by the time you take your, get your forms filled out, get your sponsors, uh, get your attestation forms filled out, it's the holidays. This is, this is a priority, and really what we're here for tonight is to see if we can at least get some direction to, to myself and to staff about what we're going to do for a legislative <coughs> ask. Um, two items just for discussion, um, both center around Lake Clark. Uh, one is the invasive aquatic plant removal. This is an ongoing issue and um, gets directly at the water quality uh, of the lake as well as navigation and just overall health of the lake. Uh, and then of course, conversion to central sewer system. Um, I'm, you, you are well aware of this issue and, and what, what has been imposed upon uh, the town as far as DEP thinks of us. Uh, what it comes down to is you do have some uh, uh, septic tanks that are deteriorating condition and are leaching into the lake. You can live with that. That's totally up to the town council. You can ignore what you're polluting into the lake, and that's totally a, a public policy decision. Um, DEP would like, uh, and at some point will become punitive if you ignore the problem. Uh, so one suggestion is let's start thinking about what we have to do to make a serious impact. Uh, I do represent other communities. I watch this issue in Tallahassee, um, uh, for uh, Miami-Dade County, I work on their water project issues. So I'm very familiar with the process. There's not a single community in the state of Florida that can afford to do this. The infrastructure is 50 years old or more, and, uh, and no one has the money to do it. Uh, so the name of the game is how do you reduce the, the impact to the taxpayer in your community as much as possible. Ideally, we'd like to get 100% federal and state funding, special grant funding, uh, and then it'd be zero. Uh, that probably won't be a reality, but uh, I do suggest we try to put some sort of an effort into getting as much money as possible. Um, I think I've heard your town manager say more than once, it's always best to spend other people's money. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that would be the goal. Uh, but we do need to start thinking about doing something uh, because I'm sure you don't want to carry the moniker of putting you know what into Lake Clark. So, mm -hmm. um, with that, I don't think, I, oh yeah, I want to talk about House Bill 37, uh, and yes, um, if this passes, and it will pass, is my prognostication, because it's House Bill 37, uh, and it's filed by a chair, uh, and so this is clearly an indication when you, when you, when you look at the roadmap and read the tea leaves, um, this is House leadership is moving this right away. Uh, so you will have to, uh, what is it, form, forms, um, I should know, it's form six. Form six. Yeah, so form six is the more stringent, uh, and um, for, well, uh, Council Member Gonzalez is not here, but for the rest of the millionaires uh, on the council, uh, you are going to have to file form six, but um, it's not that big of a deal, but that's basically what this bill is doing, and I'm, and it's clear that what they're, you wouldn't have to fill out form one. They're just moving you to, to uh, form six. There is a, uh, a little bit of a 
um, you know, question mark. Uh, and again, your your town manager pointed out that the title of town manager and chief administrator, uh, chief administrative employee, uh, <clears throat> they they exclude one. Uh, and so technically, if your charter uh, and carries the title of chief administrative, which I think yours does, uh, there's a question whether uh, it would uh, would apply or not. But I'm um, it's that I'm sure is going to come up at some point. Uh, that this is the only bill affecting local government at the moment, and uh, but stand by about to rain down. <laughs> Preemption is going to be no surprise, another big push at, um, uh, on several issues that are going to come down uh, this session. Uh, happy to answer any questions now, and let's have a discussion and tell me, you know, where are we going to what are we going to ask for? Thank you very much, Richard. I definitely think the the biggest ass that we need is is money for the prod, for the septic sewer conversion project. You know, we've been trying to get money for years, and we finally are at the stage where we are at permit, and now we need to find a way to fund it. And like you said, no municipality can just flat out afford it on their own, and we need to get every penny of the 1.7 million and and then some going forward for years to come in order to make. Uh, this project happens. So that's certainly, I think, our biggest priority amongst those, including the, the uh, aquatic Plant vegetation rate. removal. Gentlemen, any <coughs> questions or thoughts? I, I agree. We were just up for the um, legislative stuff for the League of Cities. Yeah, in Orlando. And, yeah, and we attended, um, you know, funding for, you know, grants, approaching other uh, representatives and senators so we know where our people stand but actually trying to get in front of the other folks to help them see what we're trying to achieve and accomplish because you'll get all sorts of stuff that points you in four different directions this study says this this study says that where at the end of the day my feeling is is that the state of Florida says it is what's contributing mainly to all of this across the board for the whole state of Florida, and I'm on that environmental committee, oh. the Natural Resources Committee. Oh, great. Even though they've dropped, not that they've dropped it, they haven't been as aggressive um, in seeking, you know, legislation on it, just because it just keeps being swept on the carpet. And how, how, you know, likely are they to help with more of the funding that they've already cut us like 14 times? 14 appropriations. I think we've been yeah. either denied or um, vetoed. I like to focus on the ones we got, but the good uh, year last year. To, I agree. To specifically answer the question, um, actually, Governor uh, DeSantis, uh, from what we understand, has his moniker has been infrastructure, particularly on water, um, and and there they've been record record number funding. Uh, th that is going to be the focus, I believe, of the administration this session and probably the next is going to be infrastructure. Um, and, um, and, and we believe that is going to be uh, water centric, although roads are definitely going to be part of that as well. Right. But that is what everyone's expecting is that the administration is going to be proposing uh, in the budget that becomes dead on arrival when it gets to the legislature, but is going to be proposing uh, a, a much uh, larger investment in infrastructure. But um, and to to your point on the on the on the agency, um, the legislature like the five-year work plan for transportation. They are there's clearly a move to get water projects and other state funding into some sort of an agency uh, filter. Uh, because right now, for the last three or four years or five years, it's been the Wild West. Uh, who you knew, what you, you know, it had nothing to do with prioritizing of who needed the money for water infrastructure. Uh, whereas transportation, that's the way, um, you know, folks like uh, Council Member Shalhoub that's been around forever will remember the days when transportation was the same way. It was whoever had got the, knew who you got, got a road project. Mm -hmm. Then it eventually moved to a five-year work plan, and then if you notice, nobody's going to Tallahassee asking for road money. It's all goes to FDOT. Well, that similar move for Department of Environmental Protection on water is slowly occurring as well. That's why you see an increase, 120 million on the on the uh, uh, wastewater grant program, 100 million on the resiliency, 20 million Biscayne Bay. The DEP is trying to uh, get the legislature to fund the block funding. 
and then they will go through the process of prioritizing handing out the money. So I think we'll see a decrease, and I think you'll see the governor putting more money into the agencies and these programs, and then and then making application through the grant process. Great. Okay. No, thank you, Richard. Appreciate all your hard work. Sir. I shared with uh, Mr. Pinsky an article that uh, came out um, last month where DeSantis awarded $22.7 million to protect Biscayne Bay. And um, that's a big, that's a big ask. And it was, it was completed. Um, and that included the septic to sewer conversion uh, and dollars came in from Miami-Dade and uh, North Miami for the conversion. So if anybody wants to hear it, it's right here that I shared with Mr. Penske and he called me back and said yes. Um, but remember, uh, we're mostly blue in Palm Beach County. Well, <laughs> it's changing, uh, but also that's an example of the $20 million that the legislature funded. Uh, did they allow uh, Miami-Dade County and Biscayne Bay uh, uh, co uh, uh, Commission to divvy up that? No. Uh, DEP decided where that money was go and was able to prioritize it. Uh, and uh, and the Little River, um, it was a direct, you know, talk about poop into the water. I mean, they have uh, uh, all along the Little River on the on the north side. Those are all septic tanks just leaching into the Little River you know, fish kill in Biscayne Bay. And so that's why they, uh, they DEP prioritize that funding. Uh, shifting gears a little bit for those of you who uh, will not be able to I'll start over again. For those of you who want to know the difference between a, a Form 1 and a Form 6 financial disclosure, Form 6 basically says Visa, MasterCard, American Express, want to know what you owe. You get into your, your uh, money market accounts. I want to know if it's AT&T, IBM, how much and what is it? And I serve on the municipal administration, and the the the, the war stories are, are are unbelievable. Very well qualified people come up, and they come ask, they come to uh, get the the packet to run for office, and they say, by the way, you have to fill this out. And they said, <coughs> nope, not doing. It. Why? You can just imagine. Now, if I'm a financial advisor, you're going to see all of my all of my investments and I want your money to invest so now you're going to see where I've invested mine and I'm trying to sell you a product over here that's not part of this it's it's going to become very very problematic and it's going to turn away a lot of good people now clarify does this go down to uh, advisory boards no it does not go down. that's that's where it stopped and form one basically said, uh, this is who I am, this is where I have it, but you don't know what the bottom line is. Now this says Visa, MasterCard, American Express. So, no doubt. Thank you very much, Richard. You do, a, you do a great job. And the forms are state ethics forms. Yes. So, yeah. Richard, it's always a pleasure to see you. Um, you don't mind if I stay and listen to you? No, please do. I think uh, Mr. Clark has some comments. You're not getting away that easy. <laughs> um, I believe that I read somewhere that Speaker Renner is going to allow seven bills this year instead of just six. That is correct. The limit now is seven, does not include a local bill. And doesn't, well, they don't do claims, but it does not include a local bill or resolution. Uh, so does that open up the possibility then that we can go to some red friends of ours and ask them for money as opposed to going to the blue friends and asking them for money? Um, we, we have red friends <laughs> and, and, they, and, and they, they will help. Senator Powell, uh, we're fortunate. Uh, our blue friends uh, are in leadership positions and very well respected. Um, uh, and by that I mean, uh, you know, they're not screaming on the floor. They're not you know they're 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 they work across the aisle very well, and um, so a lot of deference is given. Um, however, on on local project funding, member funding requests, um, they want it to come from your town of Lake Clark Shores. Who's your house member? David Silvers. Um, and although although Rick Roth and has Rick Roth has helped us. Um, he, it's, it would be inappropriate for him to file our funding request. There was, um, 
a comment made by Congresswoman Frankel uh, a couple of months back that the feds were looking at um, large projects that had multiple agencies and were more likely to fund those. Would it make any sense for us to reach out to our neighbors that are also doing septic to sewer projects and try and find a regional approach to money requests? Very much so. Very much so. The, 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 the projects that get the best attention, not always win, but get the, get the best chance are the ones that impact the largest amount of people. Um, Lake Clark is good because there's, uh, you know, we, we interface with the with the chain of lakes. I mean, there there is everything coming down the C51. I mean, we we already have we're impacted by folks upstream, so we have a good argument in in that regard. But if there can be a regional solution, uh, that's that's even that's even better. So um, we're, that would impact you know Central Palm Beach County. The county should be involved anyway uh, with our issues because you know they share the waterway with us, um, and as well as um, you know the communities to to the south and to the west of us. Okay, thank you. Thank you again, Richard. Thank you very much. Thank okay. Thank you, Richard. <clears throat> All right, we're going to move on to unfinished business because there's no uh, additional public hearings. This is going to be the ongoing septic sewer discussion. So we all heard uh, a, a lot of talk about the project and in particular funding. And recently we obtained, uh, what do you call it, authority, or we received the ability to get SRF, State Revolving Fund, money. Uh, what was it, 3.7 million, Dan? For Michael West. For the Michael West project, which would is, is the, would be the first of the new set of phases, if you will, phase two. One of the things that a couple of residents have reached out to me over the last couple of months was basically asking, "Is this a done deal?" I'm hearing this is a done deal. Sewers are coming to Lake Clark Shores, and the fact of the matter is, is it's not, because the process that we've been following is um, design it permit it, fund it, build it, right? So we've designed it. We have Michael West permitted. We're soon to be completed on the remaining part of the permit. The SRF funding is funding. That's a loan, right? That's a that's not that's money to use for it, but that's not the funding that we're talking about up here when we're saying we need funding. We need millions in grant money, appropriations, you name it, that's the type of money that we need. That's the type of funding that we're talking about. Right. The burden would be incredible if we didn't obtain any of it. Right. And the more money we obtain, I'm not talking 500,000 or 200,000 or 600,000. We're talking millions. The last couple of times I've been to the uh, League of City meetings, I've attended the grant workshops and they put a panel together each time. And these um, municipal, the electeds or the managers go up and they're talking about how they got all these millions. You know, you're talking about the 20 million over here, whatever that number was. They got 8 million, 15 million, 10 million. So I went up to them, all the panelists afterwards, and I had a discussion each time. And I said, How are you doing it? What on earth are you doing to get this windfall of money? And each of them had the pretty much a very similar story, which was they're a very rural area, their poverty lines 30, you know, 30%. Uh, their annual home income is 30 grand. They're Median home price is 100 grand. We don't fit any of these demographics, but that doesn't mean we cannot and we will not get the funding. So it's a it's a big priority, I think, of of our legislative uh, lobbyist as well as the town administration to find additional ways to go and get this funding. So until we get the funding that we need, I don't see how we can go forward with it. Just because state revolving fund said, hey, here's 3.7 million. If you want to turn dirt, go ahead. Well, we are shovel ready, so that's great. That puts us in the best spot possible to make this happen. It puts us in the best spot possible to get the grant funding, but for whatever reason, we haven't obtained it yet. So, uh, like I said, a couple of residents reached out to me and they go, I'm hearing it's a done deal. It's not, the council hasn't even voted on it yet. It hasn't even been up for discussion. Are we going to move forward with it? 
hasn't even been an agenda item, right? So just wanted to set the record straight on that issue and get my colleagues' thoughts on it. But we need money, millions, in order to make this project happen. And that's other people's money, not just loans. Deacon, gentlemen, you have any thoughts on that? I can't agree with you more. <laughs> I mean, you said it all. We've been, we've been, how long we've been trying? 10 years? Better just to try and get this established? It's been about that long, hasn't it? Been a long time. Yeah. So, We'd be criticized by not doing our due diligence and what That's we're true. So um, that's a big project for our incoming town manager to take on and the, and the remainder of the staff. And we know he's got success at getting some significant grants and we're looking forward to seeing what new ideas he can bring in to make that happen. Given the status of where we are on the Michael West phase, which is we're ready, we're permitted. We just need the funding. Um, the next big ticket item is gonna be, well, did we get funding or not? And as long as we don't have the funding, uh, I don't see again, how it's gonna be something before this council for an agenda item to vote on and say, hey, we're gonna take action and we're gonna vote this way or that way. We need a way, to, we need to get the town involved, the new manager to get these funding requests in. So it it has been on the agenda for uh, all year now. We can continue to leave it on there, but just so you know, the next big update needs to be, we just got some funding other people's money, grant money funding. Other than that, this is not a done deal. It's far from it. We're continuing to do our due diligence as we have been for now multiple years, right? Starting back prior to 2019 and then it ramped up after the impairment was declared on the lake. So we're trying to figure this out. We're doing what we need to do. We need to do more and getting more funding. So that is the overall status, Dan. Did I miss anything? Just uh, to put some expectations around timing, we'll go to the legislature in March and April. Uh, they'll pass a budget at some point in time. When the governor signs the budget, then we'll know whether we have money or not. That is likely going to be very close to July 1st. So we're not talking about knowing something in the next month. This is this is six months away. And what about before the, that? That would be the same for the grants because he's going to decide the budget that's going to fund the grants, right? Correct. Okay. So maybe we don't address it until then. We might as well have an update on the on the status of our of a process, right? Well, but vice mayor. No, I didn't want to interrupt you. I was just going to. I'll, I'll let you finish. I didn't want to interrupt. I think we should. Y'all, you know, we're going to keep it on the agenda. I'm just saying. Be aware, it's going to be a status of where we are in the grant funding phase versus, you know, what's the status of the project. It's really where is the status of the funding at this point, because that's the the priority. If you have questions, please we'll address them uh, at the end. Of, at the end. All right. Anything else, Mr. Clark? No, sir. Anything else from the council on this item? No. So. Right on cue. Yes, sir. If you want to come on up for audience comments, or we'll start with Ashkar Kulkarni, Mr. Kulkarni. Then she turned in the, the placard. You know, during first, my name is Ashok Kulkarni. 8131 Westlake Drive. Uh, actually, last time during the last meeting, before that, I had given this memo to everybody. And therefore, I was expecting answer from you because it was addressed to you, but you happened to point finger to the town manager and this arrangement cannot be changed. The answer was because of the technical things, it cannot be changed, something like that. But I had to sit down for an hour and a half because the answer is given at the last. By that time, almost everybody has left the town and the answer was less than three minutes, okay? But all I'm just trying to say is that 
that you recall that similar thing happened. The main gates for the town hall were closed because we had some computers and technical thing there. That should not be the way. And if this is the way it's going to be, are you suggesting this is going to remain permanent? Because this was done for the COVID thing, and this ought to come back to normal. This location ought to be there. Number two, it's very difficult when the attorney is answering, chief is sitting there. For you, it is easy to look, but when they answer, it's not easy for us to look there, quite honestly. Therefore, please consider this change positive because America is most advanced country to make all the changes. For the COVID, you had changed something like that. That time it should have been mentioned to people who change it that, okay, now everybody's sitting close together. Now this to go back there. Every, it's convenient to everybody, the audience for you. And especially while talking, you must have noticed many people when they were speaking, they turn around looking there and looking there. But if that is there, this won't happen. And three council members, you have been there for a <coughs> of years. <clears throat> this thing never change. And especially now answering question you have put in the last thing, that never used to be there. No town does anything. If somebody is really asking question, you ought to answer at the same time. Because I experienced after questioning or discussing this, I sat there for an hour and a half. I did not get the answer. That's why I'm just repeating this again. This should not happen. So please reconsider this. I will appreciate it. So I want to thank you all. I wish you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Barker. Ken Barker, 8260 Pine Tree Lane. Um, gentlemen, I would like to, especially town manager, thank you for the update that you gave us in the uh, shorelines. And we were talking about the sewers. And from here, it says the process begins in 2015. Now, my math is not great, but that's at least eight years that we've been talking about the sewers. And I want to say that those that are opposed to the sewers, I'm in favor of it, but those people that are against the sewers, when the ocean rises and the water seeps into Lake Clark Shores and their septic tanks will no longer drain, and now we live in a cesspool. So I suggest to all these people that are against the sewers that they get on board and see if we can't keep Lake Clark Shores sewage free. And I know that it's difficult. You cannot change stupidity. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Yes, Ms. Barker. Marty Barker, 8260 Pine Tree Lane. I won't be as harsh as my husband. But <laughs> I want to thank um, our council for everything they've done so far with sewage and thank Dan. Um, it's I, I'm very much in favor of going from septic to sewer. I don't want to have to put another septic tank in my yard. I don't want to put another drain field there. I don't want more sewage going into the lake seeping in. I want us to have a lake where we can actually water ski, jet ski, whatever, use the water for what it's intended. 
And I just want to thank you guys for everything. And you can put both of us, my husband and myself, in favor of going to septic. Thank you. Going you mean to going sewer. to sewer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's get that right. Let's going let's, to, let's I know, you know, they both start with S. <laughs> And there's a few other things that start with S. We won't say that. I understand. <laughs> Anyone else that'd like to come up who's here in the audience for audience comments? Yes, sir. Good evening. Jeff Shane, 8121 Pine Tree. First of all, I want to compliment everybody here regarding the tree lighting ceremony last weekend. That was pretty awesome. And so is the golf cart parade. Um, you were talking about the getting the funding before starting. Is there a percentage target that we're going for? You know, like, is it 100%? Is it less than 100% before we start digging the dirt? So that was one question. Another question, uh, this, this is not going to be appealing to anybody in here, but if there's technology that the Florida Department of Environmental Services or somebody has permitted and approved that converts sewage water into potable water, allowing that to be a water resource to sell to whoever we get our water from. Would that be something that could be used to pay off loans that we would get or reduce the homeowners that contribute? Are you talking about reclaiming water? No, it, it's... No, he's talking about cleaning the water and selling it. Yeah, there, there's there's brand new technology that um, does allow that. There, uh, I forgot what city in the state of Florida is the first one that has now has that permit and they're coming up to constructing the plant and then it's gonna be rolled out nationwide. Um, so looking into the future, would it be a possibility where we could then sell or potentially reuse our own water and reduce the water costs? That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a Dan question. Dan question for sure. <laughs> We already move a lot of water, so tell us what you think there, Mr. Yes. Clark. Well, I, I, I would very much appreciate if this gentleman has information that he share it with me, because uh, beyond reuse, I'm not sure what he's talking about. I don't know of anything that is localized because the cost uh, is expensive to distribute. That's why reclaimed is generally a large treatment plant with a lot of capabilities um, because the the technology is expensive but if he would like to share with me the information he has we'll look into it it's all we get back after the meeting we'll... right that's what i thought miss bing yes come on up you have to start with the water plant. You, you'd have to change your infrastructure oh. <laughs> because you don't have the capability of capturing it. You'd have to build a plant. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, we, we just move water. Yeah. But uh, reuse, um, and then they sell to golf courses, or you can set up a program in your community where the water they that's used to water the lawns are water reuse. You're capturing the storm water. Um, the potable... Um, I, I, I've heard of stories, but I, like Dan, I've never heard of actually uh, sewer water or even storm water and turning it into actual drinking water. Technology probably exists, but I don't know where it would be in Florida. And I don't want to disagree. disagree. It, may, it may exist, uh, but I have not heard of it being implemented in Florida, but there are communities that, that do reuse. Uh, and there are communities that have, particularly those with golf courses and other other programs, but it starts with the water plant. You have to have some way of capturing the water, treating the water, and then sending it back out again. 
but you, oh, you, you don't have any of the infrastructure right. in place other than rain barrels, perhaps. But you, yeah. but you would need something to capture the water. Okay. Jeff, are you an engineer, sir? No. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's, we all need to have an engineer, we know. Those guys make the Thank you, Richard. Water. <laughs> Drinking water. Drinkable. <clears throat> Potent potables. Um, I my concern has been about communication from the town council. Mrs. Bing, name and address, oh, I'm please. Sorry. Louise Bing, seven four zero one Westlake Drive. Thank you. My concern has been about communication between you all, the town council, and the seven hundred of us. And when I'm, I go, we go around petitioning. I am surprised and disappointed at the number of people who still don't even know this is going on. And I'm so glad that we did this. This is the beginning. This is addressed. It's going to everybody that lives here. And if they didn't know about it, they've got excuse me, they've got this nice article <clears throat> as an introduction. And um, what I'm thinking is that you waited a long time before you did put anything in the mail for us to get all the information that you could and be sure that you were doing, giving us information that you could stand behind. And um, I'm thinking that we need more. <laughs> And it would be wonderful if we could have actual letters or memos going out to all of the residents, or at least all of the 700, that would be giving them a little more information, the kind of information that just surprised <coughs> people like me, and help us to understand what's coming. And what we talked about tonight is so wonderful because at least we're getting hope that you are trying the best you can and Mr. Lovello to get us government, thank you, a government money if we can. And I think we can. Well, anyway, um, what I did is I have three little suggestions of things that you might want to tell our residents, particularly the 700 people, that are things that if we are, like Mr. Clark said, sub shovel ready, if we get to that point, that they know certain things Number one, that they would get the breakdown of all the costs, even if we know they're going to be changed. Give them the best you can of the breakdown of different things and what they cost. If you could answer some questions that you know are going to be asked if you put yourself in our place, um, like what's going to happen to my sprinkler system? Um, can I use my own septic tank system? Do I have to use one you're using? And um, how long is our road going to be torn up? And most important, whatever you do that you write to us, please somebody sign it so that we know that it's got a date on it and a signature. And even if you put town council, that's that's good. That's okay because we know all of you. Um, all right, that's one suggestion. The second suggestion is Miss Bing, your three minutes is up. Oh no. Really? Can I go really, really quick? I feel like she was talking about the water in the beginning. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> should get a mask and I'm a map showing where the 700 people are. And I went to a lot of trouble and I got a mask, a, a map made up that we could easily put in the letter or the memo in an envelope they send to people showing the addresses of all of the 700 people. And um, that would make them feel like they're part of a group and understand that this is not just me, this is this whole group of people. And lastly, if we do, worst come to worst, have to end up with most of this money coming out of our pockets. If we're paying all of this, please consider the fact that we would want to see something from the government as far as correspondence so that we know why that you try, we can't get the money and we have to do it ourselves. <laughs> and basically what I'm concerned about is just you 
not you just telling us what you want us to know, but listening to us, the questions we need to know, which I think that article start, um, starts doing that here. And I'm just so glad we got that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bain. Those are some great suggestions. Anything else from the audience here today? <clears throat> While y'all are thinking about it, here we go. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Uh, Joe Shearer, uh, 8060 Westlake, 8045 Westlake, and 7100 Westlake. Oh, the, you were the quasi judicial proceeding? Yes. So I'm, I might be able to say in the after, but so I just have some questions since currently I'm paying my, my uh, utilities at 8060 to Palm Springs. And I'll be moving, you know, and then I also have 7,100, which we pay to the town of West Palm. So if we're going to be doing this, I live on the lake, I fish, I, I agree with the watershed. We need to do this at some point. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. I'm a realtor and we have storms, you know, the water is rising, the storms, we have king tides, we have things, and, and this is inevitable. That's going to happen. My question is, is how is it going to affect, you know, is I look at this as a community problem. We're, we're leaking to our lakes. The majority of our sept, uh, majority of our pipes under our properties are all under a slab with copper or iron. And a lot of those have bellies and a handful of issues that are already leaking into our watershed without even us getting to our septic tanks. Currently at 8060, I'm about to have to replace my septic tank and I pay my utilities uh, to uh, Palm, Palm Springs. My other septic tank's fine, but how is it gonna affect me being on both ends? And that's just something I'm concerned about. You know, would it be better if we looked at this as a whole, as a community? Since I own several properties and I fall in both, you know, both, both categories, and this is inevitable, is this something that we should look at as not for just the 700, but more as a community service where we're actually making our lakes clean and actually something where we want to go swimming and utilize our waterways. So I'm, I'm just curious how that's going to affect a, a person in my situation. Sure. Be happy to address that here in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. Well, I know we're on audience. Are you coming up? West Cook, 7105 Pine Tree. Um, only point of order is Mr. Shear is here and the clock is ticking on his code violations. So could you, I'm not sure he understands. Well, that's what I was about to address with oh, Charlie, but you, okay. I was giving you the floor so you could do the audience comments. Okay. And also, where do we stand on the uh, trailer? We'll provide an update on that in a minute. Okay. So, Charlie, now that the uh, petitioner is here, the applicant, can we have a motion to bring back the quasi-judicial proceeding and hold the public hearing? Yes, the motion would be to remove the item from the table and reconvene the public hearing. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. You're up. So just to so update, Mr. Sh do you need to go through it all over again, Charlie? No, I do not. But I do need to swear him in. Okay. And anyone else who may be speaking in favor of or against the application, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you guys. Thank you. It could be, yeah. So early, please come up. Earlier, uh, the town attorney, Mr. Sheck gave an update on the application, the reason for the application, the zoning board's recommendation to the town to approve it with the condition that you don't enclose it, or put a roof or walls around the trellis. And the only thing we were missing was your presentation and then any um, any rebuttal. Uh, and, and Mr. Shear, what you need to do is just briefly explain to them what is there that you're asking for the variance for and also then uh, explain why you believe it meets the conditions of the code for the granting, as you did in your application. Okay. I, I was never informed by anyone in the town I needed to bring a presentation tonight. 
Um, I've been going through this process for over six months. I've spent <clears> over <throat> probably $3,000 and a lot of time, money, and energy to comply with the town. I love the, I love the area, um, but I was unaware of that. Uh, essentially, what I built is I built an orchid arbor on the south side of my property, uh, which is enclosed. I built it with concrete footers. And essentially what this pro this allows me to do is utilize the south side of my property where an AC unit is and nothing else and kind of reutilize the space into an active space for my family for gardening and, and our passion for orchids and exotic plants. Um, I built the orchid arbor within a tree as well. Uh, my gardener, uh, the, my gardener who is an arborist, advised me this was the best location on my property as I live on the lake with, with multiple large other trees, a large lychee tree, large avocado tree with a lot of lot of exposure where 86 C's it cuts in um, right kind of through the canal on the second part of the lake. So I have a little cut. I got a lot of east wind and a lot of exposures. This is an orchid arbor. I love growing orchids and, orchids and exotic plants that need filtered light, which is why I built it within an, uh, an avocado tree on the side of my yard. And where I encroached is, is I, I didn't build this as a structure, I built this for gardening. There's no running power, no water. Um, I'm on great terms with my neighbors. I had them sign off on something stating they were fine with the situation as far as where my, my variance uh, stands. So I'm only within, I think it's about three and a half feet from the south side of my property. I built this to code. I own the house across the street. I own multiple other properties. I'm a realtor. I'm not looking to have this fly off and fly into my neighbor's house or a, a property that you know I own as well. So I I, I built it properly as far as doing Miami Dade County uh, Dade County Miami rated hurricane proof straps on the roof. There's no uplift. There's no ceiling on top. There's no power or water. And then I also built the shelves to be removable. So if there is a category five storm, I can move my plants inside. I can take my shelves off and this structure is cemented into the ground with three foot concrete barriers around a uh, three foot concrete uh, footers and hurricane straps with no uplift. I, I built this myself uh, during the peak of the, <laughs> the peak of when wood was the most expensive, unfortunately. Uh, and I've since then complied with you guys over months and months i've gotten a new survey my neighbors are all in favor for it and it's really allowed my family to, to be able to utilize a passion of gardening and a love we have for this and recreate a space that was dead space on our property um without see i i don't want a roof on it ever if i saw a roof on it and it became a shed down the road it drive me nuts this is strictly for plants gardening and my family's enjoyment um so i don't have a pre uh, that's all I, you needed to do. yeah all right <laughs> you're fine thank you uh any uh, rebuttal code questions? violation right now Wes? there is what's the what's when and what's the status or we need to have not been need... sworn yeah sorry so that testimony is not acceptable unless you want me to swear him I didn't know there was a nobody's we're, we're violation a in there. Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry, we're public hearing. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you, no, there is a code. There was a code violation. Uh, so I went through the whole process with the town. They got the violation. I applied for a permit. Unfortunately, it wasn't within the setbacks. Um, so after that, I applied for the variance. I got a new survey because it was just out. I spent money on the survey. You know, I've gone through the whole thing as far as bringing in other people within the town that live here who are lawyers and land developers for West Palm Beach to help me with this. Because uh, at the end of the day, this is a trellis, not a structure. And I didn't really see <clears throat> what I was building as a violation where, you know, I'm storing, utilizing this as another workshop or anything or making money or building another structure where I wouldn't want but it's it's hidden behind a six foot fence. I have trees in front of that. I have a you know seven foot you know seven feet of wood coconut tree in front of that. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah. you can't we even have notice pictures. it. We've got, we have pictures. Oh, you guys do have. We that. got everything. Oh, we 
You said presentation. Well, that's <laughs> so you had my presentation. Yeah, we have your application. Oh, okay. We got everything. We have your application. I didn't know that. That's why I was going. The zoning through. board's recommendations. We have all of them. Yes, yeah, so I've gone through the process, and I, we want to comply. I love the town, and sure. I, I don't want to see it closed. So, is uh, any questions before we uh, let him sit down? No. Thank you very much for your presentation. Any uh, one want to rebut? Uh, the request or argue against the request or offer rebuttal testimony for consideration during this hearing. Anything online, Dan? Cunning, could they even do it online? Because you got to be sworn in. I don't think so. All right. That concludes the public hearing and then we vote, right? All right. That concludes the public hearing. Uh, any discussion on, on approving or disapproving this? So moved. <clears throat> I second that motion. All right. So you need to, I think you need to, he needs to say a little bit more formally than that. You, you, gotta, you need to identify if you're accepting the, uh, the findings of fact and recommendation of the uh, ZBA. Because those finding of facts will then be in your order. You would go to the, go to the public hearing. Everybody should know that the, uh, the zoning board has approved. Is that correct, Charlie? They've recommended, recommended to you approval, approval of the. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, I think you can just read the order, the adoption of the order. Yes, Charlie. Or does he need to state the finding of facts and and read you, the order? You can you can adopt their uh, what... findings of fact and order. Uh, I hereby move that uh, we accept the uh, findings of fact in uh, ZBA case number 2022-02 on Joseph and Cassandra Scher uh, that was presented to them on November 16, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. The uh, ZBA of Town of Lake Clark Shores heard the variance request from Joe and Sandra Share 8060 West Lake Drive and recommends the Town Council of the Town of Lake Clark Shores approve the variance of 6.5 feet as requested by the applicant for an existing trellis that is located 3.5 feet from the sideline with the condition that the trellis will never have a roof or sides. Is there a second? Anything else? Second. All right, motion has been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So going back to audience comments, <coughs> anything online, Dan? No, sir. Okay, we're going to move on to status reports. We'll start with Chief Smith. Yes. You all have a copy of the report. Uh, last month, the police department responded to 316 calls for service. Uh, three arrests were made, one warrant, out of county warrant, another one fleeing and eluding the police, and another subject arrested for trespassing narcotics. Uh, the police department did a total of 181 traffic stops for the month. We wrote 172 citations, 20 of those were criminal. And we had 11 vehicle crashes, two hit and runs. The flock uh, LPR cameras ran approximately 158,566 tags through our seven camera system. Uh, one other thing, I we had a meeting with the uh, United States Attorney. Uh, that was with the Police Chief Association dealing with uh, organized crime and narcotics and working with them in the Palm Beach County area. The rest of that information is confidential. Uh, all the officers completed their CPR training uh, last month for the year, and we had 20 code violations uh, issued. Any questions? I don't have any questions, Chief. I just, I'm looking through some of the Stuff here and, and your officers' work uh, related to noise ordinance complaints and contacting the party where the complaint was made, even though their uh, the decibel level might not have breached the ordinances. So thank you very much for continuing to work with your officers to assist our residents in addressing these noise complaints. 
Any questions for the chief? Nope. Again, I'd like to thank you, Chief, for recognizing Officer Poulos uh, for initiating 120 uh, traffic stops, resulting in 16 criminal citations and over 100 moving citations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He works uh, day shift and he was signed to um, Pine Tree, Westlake, where we've had some complaints and also the red light uh, violations. <laughs> Uh, Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief Adams, welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Tracy Adams, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue District Chief. It's always a pleasure coming and quite an education from the politics. Thank you for the update of the gentleman left um, <clears throat> and all the septic information. I actually learn a lot when I come here. I'm grateful. Busy month here. We ran about 24 different calls in your area, 18 being medical, three being motor vehicle accidents, two being fire alarms, and one being um, an assist. Um, we have run about 150,000 calls so far this year, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue has. We have a lot going on. We're hiring about 20, pardon me, 200 new recruits. We are doing some current promotions and adding some other command staff to the area as well, some battalion chiefs and some other district chiefs, and we're increasing, enhancing our training for all of our hazard mitigation. We have um, a, we serve, we have 49 different fire stations. We have a few more being built. In your particular area, two fire stations predominantly come in here, which is station 39 from Palm Springs and 93 from Lake Worth, which is slightly southeast over, coming in from the south southeast section of your community. Busy, the fall's been very busy for us. We've had a lot of uh, read for record, first responder appreciation, all the fall Halloween and, and holiday parties. So I'd like to wish everyone a very um, safe and healthy holiday and, and a blessed new year. And thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Chief. Truly appreciate all that you and, and your team does for our town. Thank you. Any questions from the chief? No. All right. And move on to Mr. Sheck. My report is included in your agenda packet. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Sheck? No. No. Greg? No, no thanks. Mr. Vice Good. No, thank you very much, Charlie. All right, moving on to Dan. Mr. Clark. I'm happy to answer any questions. I do have uh, one additional reminder. This Sunday, starting at five o'clock, we'll have our um, menorah lighting event at Memorial Park. I'm very excited about that. That'll be our second annual, yes? Second annual. So yeah, if y'all can make it, that would be wonderful. Five o'clock this Saturday evening, or Sunday evening. Sunday. Sunday evening. Sunday. <laughs> I'm very excited uh, that uh, Joe's contract was approved tonight. Um, I'm grateful that he's here, and uh, I'm grateful that I have six months left. <laughs> hey, if we can get him replaced, his replacement in sooner, he can. He'll be here sooner, and he'll be out earlier. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. You're welcome, Joe. <laughs> Um, just some things uh, from your report. We had uh, 25 entries for the town's holiday parade. We had over 400 people attend the tree lighting event, which was a wonderful event. It was even bigger than it was, I believe, the year before. At least it felt that way to me. And it was great that the event basically was right back to where it was pre-COVID. So things are back in full force and effect here in the town. I think it's wonderful. And a lot of that has to do with the hard work of Dan and the staff day in and day out to make these events happen. So thank you very much, Dan, and, and to the entire town staff. Any additional questions for Mr. Clark? Okay. All right, we're gonna be moving on now to council comments. Uh, in order, in the interest of time and, and for those who came up and spoke, wanna address some of these uh, questions first. One of them, Dan, or one of them was the amount of funding we need to go forward on the project. It's a great question. I haven't personally figured that out. I'm, I think 
uh, once Joe gets involved and we have a better appreciation of the costs and we know when we get the funding in, that's when we can make that decision. I can tell you this from my personal perspective, it is millions. So 1.7 million, that's half the cost of Michael West, that's huge. But the remainder of the project is gonna be uh, significantly more expensive than just this one section. So it's gonna be millions of dollars, right? So if we get a, a grant for 700 grand, I think that's wonderful, but that's just not at the level that I'm talking about or that I would like to see, because that's not gonna have a major impact on the burden of the residents. Paying for half of it, major impact on saving the residents a lot of money. Paying, you know, six hundred thousand dollars, it's a nice benefit, but that's not the type of, of uh, savings, if you will, or protection I want to give the residents when it comes to uh, trying to proceed with this project. So I don't have a particular number. I'm going to leave that up to the, those who are well more experienced than me, like Joe and whoever he brings in. But um, I had this discussion with him the other day. Millions <laughs> is 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 what I'm what I'm wanting for our town to ease the burden on the residents so that this project can become possible and we can begin to clean up the lake. Any, uh, anyone want to talk about that topic or add to it? I just, I would like that. I completely agree with what you said. I mean, microphone, please. Yeah, I just, I completely agree with you, um, Paul. I think you eloquently stated what we really need to do here. And this makes perfect sense. So now we're just dealing with money issues. I mean, I do not want to have a project that we can't afford period and i don't want to have to bear the burden individually <laughs> or the residents to bear the burden individually i think we got to work our way through this and that's why i'm excited about joe because i know joe you're going to help us through this and help us get through a lot of the grant writing because you and i have had long discussions about grant writing and how it can be done and i'm looking forward to 2023 being a grant writing year yeah me thanks. too yeah <laughs> thanks president pro tem freebold I'm good at this time. Everybody has said, so I agree. Mr. Vice Mayor? Ditto. Okay. Um, you have to get with Dan, your technology and cleaning water, it, although I think Mr. Pinsky may have answered it. Any way we can save money or make money, I, I like the sound of both those two things a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So if you could maybe share some information with them, that would be great. Um, Miss Bing, so I'm all about communication, right? I want everybody, you yourself have reached out to me, many residents have over the course of my time in the council. Uh, if you have any questions, communicate with me. The reason I think that it hit the buzz is because we've been gathering information. Literally, it's been a multi-year process to do our due diligence as it relates to this septic sewer conversion. And we are we have made great strides from 2018, 2019 to the present. And I think that's uh, gonna start reflecting in the information we're gonna be able to start rolling out. And uh, I think communication is key. Uh, in early discussions, when it came to Micah West in particular, uh, they were definitely gonna be, as well as all the residents who were gonna be impacted as the phases go on, all that information was gonna start going out. We don't have that information yet because we're not proceeding with the project because we don't have the funding. So um, I, I certainly think that impact on driveway sprinklers, how long will the roads be torn up? These are all regular normal questions that when the time comes, when it's more of a reality because we have the funding and we're following the plan, um, I definitely wanna see all of these uh, questions, if you will, addressed. And whether it's a flyer, an additional buzz letter, emails, door hangers, whatever we need to do to, to most effectively communicate that uh, I certainly would want to see that happen we just to date haven't had that information I didn't realize that until I heard you speak that we're not ready to ask what was going to happen to our sprinkler system yeah I imagine they're going to be if someone's someone's going to be impacted you got your sprinklers coming down near the near that area anyone else want to add on that topic nope. Mr. Clark yes sir Joe, you on board with communication? <laughs> I know you are. Okay, um, Mr. Shear, great question. You're in a you're in a predicament, but I think what was touched on earlier with Mr. Clark and Mr. Pinsky is there have been conversations to take a regional approach to this, get the county involved, get Palm Springs involved, 
and make it a, a regional uh, effort versus just Lake Clark Shores on its own. Palm Springs is already starting the, the process to see how they're going to do their conversion, how, when, cost, et cetera. They're getting their years behind where we started. So I don't, maybe Mr. Clark has an answer for what life is going to be like for you being in two different service areas. But the fact that we have two different service areas is, is a substantial issue for the town because we can't go and impact Palm Springs service areas because that's Palm Springs service area. So, Mr. Clark, can you add on to that? Can I add, add just a couple of things? Um, there's been a lot of misinformation about um, those residents served by Palm Springs. There's been a lot of misinformation about uh, 1,400 homes in town, 700 of them are our responsibility that leaves 700 on the other side. What's going to happen to them? The reality is that about 475 of those 700 already have sewer. Palm Springs has been actively working over the years. Wellesley was put in with a sewer system in place. Um, the estates has a sewer system in place. The uh, area that we want to annex already has sewer in place. So there's only, uh, based on a study done by Palm Springs, there's only about 250 homes that uh, they are responsible for that are not yet sewered. So the issue on their side is smaller than our issue, but they are working to resolve that. I just think that they're two years, maybe three years behind where we are. They weren't as, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say aggressive, they weren't as aware of the challenges associated with those issues and um, they're trying to catch up now. I would say diligent. Good word. Thank you, Counselor. So. So it just kind of concerns me. So we're speaking as a region, as Lake Clark Shores. I bought in Lake Clark Shores. It's in West Palm Beach. I didn't buy in Palm Springs because that's in Palm Springs. It, the area we live in has, you know, home values are rising. It's a better area. So am I going to be affected and put on their program or Lake Clark Shores? Or am I going to be protected by you guys if they service me? I know I'm happy to pay for it you know on the other property am i dealing with palm springs or you guys at the end of the day and i really think this should be something focused within the region uh utility service areas are defined way ahead of the utilities going in and once they're put in they're impossible to change uh, or nearly impossible to change so if you're in palm springs uh, utility service area, you're always going to be in Palm Springs utility service area and you will uh, be subject to their council decisions on how they want to address issues. Even though it's outside. Even though. Come again. See, I happened to attend the meeting at Palm Springs where one consultant make a presentation about safety to shore on a number of their communities, including Lake Lars Shores. And <clears throat> I took his business card and then I wrote him a letter that you discuss this project. Can you provide me some details about that? And when you are going to do it, how you are going to do it. I did not get that answer. Last week, I sent him a reminder again that all I'm asking is it's a public information. You made a presentation there. I was there in the meeting. So he ought to explain exactly where it is going. So since you are discussing and all that, all I'm just telling you, I'm still in the dark. I have not heard anything from them. Okay. You want Palm Springs? To, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, Palm Springs needs to communicate with their with their service area is what you're asking for. Sure, we can reach out to to Palm Springs and see if they have if there's a way for them to communicate with our residents who are in their service area. 
just to add to that, I think that would comfort me. You know, I know you guys as a town, I'd be much more favorable because you guys all have skin in the game here. We're all locals. We love our community. So me kind of just having that, that, that ghost of not really knowing and being in the jurisdiction out of it, you know, are they going to say it's more or less? How are they going to treat, you know, are they going to hire a contractor that you guys would like um, or advise for our town? So I'm just concerning maybe on how you guys could potentially commingle and work together as towns that coexist for this, this septic, you know, idea. Um, I, I feel a little bit out of the loop knowing now that I have to go to another town, town council meeting where it's, it's really not even West Palm Beach, Palm Springs. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Um, it, so we can reach out to Palm Springs and see if they can get some communication out to to those uh, residents who are who they're servicing. All right, and then lastly is the trailer uh, update. So Wes, we had a really good um, workshop uh, about three months ago, two months ago. I thought it was very helpful. Um, we're when's the moratorium ending? February. February. So between now and February, the, the council and the town has to decide if they're uh, ready to, to make um, some moves on changes or not, no changes, or hold another workshop. After that meeting and then speaking with Dan and Joe, I think we should have another workshop uh, to just further discuss it because it seems to me that no matter what decision is made, it's going to be impacting a number of residents and it's going to be impacting those residents in a variety of ways right there's almost no property or resident that seemingly is being impacted the same by these decisions and uh, i think another workshop to further discuss it have some visual aids if you will kind of take the information we learned from the first workshop uh, digest it and come back and say hey look here's what a lot of people said here's what a lot of people don't want here's what these people do want you know now that we have this framework and we have some images maybe on what's going on in town like uh, certain predicaments that certain homes are in whether it's a handful or, or 20. i had spoke with a resident at the tree lighting and uh, he wasn't able to attend the meeting but he's very uh, adamant on uh, no screening behind the behind the house but he's also he also doesn't sit on a corner lot right so his situation is very different from the corner lot people uh, residents i should say and then the corner lot residents that don't have a fence or a gate so i think there just needs my my personal uh, position would be having another workshop um, after the holidays to get a better idea so we can um, as a community get the most input we can to to make the most informed decision on what's in the best interest of the residents any uh, comments from the rest of the council on that topic i agree very well said. Okay. Okay. So. And, and as we draft the ordinance, any input that you have, I would welcome. Uh, contact me individually because we can't violate the Sunshine Law. But give me your input uh, as to what you think needs to be changed or what you think needs to stay the same. Okay. Thank you, Charlie. All right, we'll start with Councilman Rodriguez. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, everybody. Um, we have great tree lighting, 83 golf carts. We're in the golf cart parade Saturday night. It was amazing. Um, we ended up at Sushi Joe, had a good time there. Um, the parade, all these events were just beautiful this year. I look forward to the Lenora. Uh, event Sunday night too. That's uh, a local resident started that up, and I'm really thank thankful for that. Um, just want to wish everybody, let's just you know, be safe. 2023 is already here, almost. It's hard to believe. I know, right? I don't know where 2022 went, but it's almost in the books. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Bye. President Pro Tem Feeble. You're going to talk about that, right? Yes, I, 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 I you're, yeah, it's well, up here. To you, ben. Um, Louise, I understand and I appreciate your comments. And I just want to remind everybody that every one of the council members, even our current town manager, has to pay those expenses regardless of where we land. 
and we have worked very, very hard hours upon hours and hours and hours of traveling looking for these dollars and we continue to look and uh, Mr. Pinsky is a great leader for us advises us if you are not in that game it's a very difficult process to follow and when we were just recently in Orlando when we attended these workshops for you know finding dollars and finding money and going out and seeing who you talk to talk to people different very time consuming. It's hard to get in front of these senators and representatives when we basically have a day, maybe two during session. And some of their demonstrations they gave, they're walking in hallways, you're trying to catch them. Hey, I need 10 minutes of your life. For 60 days, I need 10 minutes of your life. Most of them aren't willing. Some of them are, but the ones that we don't know typically are like, who, you know, who are you guys? Where are you from? Where is Lake Clark Shores? But we agree Lake Clark Shores is great and we love it here, and we are gonna do everything we can to bring this along. You're right, the property values are outstanding. All American. It's fantastic. Um, I, I'm, like I don't plan on going anywhere ever. My wife may have different ideas, but I don't. <laughs> I'm a realtor, let me know. Yes, <laughs> yes. I got uh, the realtor know. guys are all over the place. I wanna, I wanna. Yes, I understand. Um, so, Louise, we, we are working very hard. We will continue to communicate and get as much information. We're gonna cover some of that other stuff here in a minute. And um, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy holidays, happy everything. Let's all stay positive. Let's focus on what we have to do at hand here. There's the septic to sewers, just one tiny little thing. Just one little thing. It's the most expensive thing we're dealing with, but there's all sorts of other things our community are, are facing from the state. How long have we been trying to get a bridge now, Mr. Clark? Four years. It's a long time for something that's needed. Don't you agree? We're close. We're getting close because we do small steady steps and we don't quit. These guys up here, we don't quit. We keep working. I will give that to all of you gentlemen. So it's a pleasure to serve up here with everybody. Joe, congratulations. We look forward to the future here, and um, pretty soon you're going to be getting to work, because I know he wants to be out of here before July 1st, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor. You know, um, thank you very much for the uh, the update by everybody. Richard, um, I refer to Richard as my coach, because when we go up to Tallahassee, he basically, or my handler, he says, okay, this is who you have to talk to, blah, 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 blah. And we just don't go up there uh, willy-nilly. We go up there and we have appointments and we have agendas. Uh, we have flyers that we present saying, look, this is what we want to talk about. So when we go to these meetings, they leave with something from Lake Clark Shores in their hand. And we established this years ago. And, you know, the uh, you think we've been doing the subject to sue or the issue from 2015. Y'all would fuss at us up one side, down the other, and ran, run us out of town on a rail if we did not do our due diligence to do the design, to do the permit, to do the funding, do the bidding, and then building. We knew it was coming. We tried to stay ahead of the curve, and we're taking a lot of heat for it. But good God almighty, folks, we have a fiduciary responsibility to each and every one of our neighbors. And I'm not for putting a shovel in the ground unless we got the money and the bank to to to, to pay for it. You know, it's it's you know we just have to work together. We just have to work together. The um, um, I thought that the tree lighting was fantastic. Um, it it was you're right, folks. It was it's like the good old days are back again. And, uh, you know, we're still standing, you know, Lake Clark Shores is still standing. I think it was, uh, it might have been Elton John, but we've gone through a heck of a lot and we're still here, folks. Um, people came up to me um, and said, uh, tree lighting, con uh, the tree, not the tree, the uh, Christmas decorations, they were uh, voting was last night. And some people came up to me and said, we want to have a Halloween uh, uh, decoration contest. <clears throat> so I mentioned it to to Dan, and as true as Dan can be, he says, 
Uh, talk to your new town manager. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm talking to my new town manager. Um, please, Mr. New Town Manager and Dan, um, please get us our room reservations for Palm Beach, League, uh, Palm Beach County Day and uh, Legislative Action Days. I don't want to be, you know, uh, two blocks away. I want to be where the action is, please. Thank you. And um, the uh, staff. Did we not have the best staff around? Look at all the hard work that they did at the tree lighting. And it was just, uh, you know, you can't clap with only one hand, folks. And I know you've heard me say that before, but think about it. You really can't clap with only one hand. And it's it's, it's wonderful. So I thank everybody. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Happy, uh, happy Merry Christmas. And just everybody be safe. And just thank God for all of our blessings. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Mr. Cocardi, I don't didn't mean to, to leave you off the list. I think I said this last meeting. I have no problem moving everybody back up here. I, I know Dan, because he's doing, he's running this. Um, I don't know if Joe will be doing the same technical setup when he uh, joins officially, but there's no issue bringing uh, Mr. Sheck back up here or the chief so that we can have a, a full dais again. So uh, maybe we can make that change come the next meeting. Mr. Mayor, there is an issue. Oh, okay. Uh, what is that? The mixer that we have was set up, and not all of those mics are connected to it. And it's not just a simple thing of plugging in mics because the mixer has to be reprogrammed. It's a digital mixer. It's got certain, I'm going into way too much detail, but it has certain channels that... Um, control feedback and this room is the worst room in the world for feedback so we can go back up there but it's not going to be the next meeting it may be uh february before we get back up there sounds like it's a problem you can solve i like it thank you <laughs> okay um i want to just touch on uh, on something that is you kind of heard a little bit uh, this evening from from a variety of of individuals there has been a lot of misinformation that has gone out and been disseminated uh, some way shape or form on a variety of topics and a resident uh, drew them to my attention as I believe she also uh, communicated the rest of the council and uh, I, some of this was just bizarre to me um, and I want to make sure that you know we can address some of them and maybe we can do uh, an updated interim buzz or something that's a little bit more frequent to address some of these things. But before I continue on to this misinformation, if you hear something that just sounds flat out crazy or, gosh, how is that possible? Please pick up the phone and call me, call Dan, call Joe, if you want to be bothered before he leaves his new, his, his current job. But call someone in the town and tell them what you heard because it's important by, by way of example. Um, the cameras that are um, on the in entrance and exits to Lake Clark Shores. There was, they were said, uh, the rumor was, cost a hundred grand, they don't work, the criminals know all about it. That's not true, right? So when I campaigned and I was, I lived in Michael West, I still live in Michael West, but my first house was right there on Arabian Road West and everybody said, we need cameras here. Got on the council, we established a fund and that fund was meant to beautify the lake and put security cameras in. We put security cameras in. <clears throat> they were L3 cameras. They were up running and working, license plate reader, etc. And then L3 went out of business. So the cameras didn't work. Got a flock system now. Flock system has been up, I don't know how long, but we weren't without cameras for long. And someone thought that the cameras put a feed to the police department, and the police department doesn't monitor the feed. So Criminals are getting away with whatever they want to get away with. It's not true. I mean, just think of that. Does that even sound logical? No. The feeds go directly to the police officers in their car, and they can access it on a website within, what was it, three seconds, Chief? Yeah, I, I get notified. And, you know, all these uh, thousands and thousands of tags we run, we get information on uh, sex offenders and people that uh, – uh, have restraining orders and stuff that the general public doesn't really need to know but i mean the the system is working 
Correct. And uh, we're notified. Uh, I get notified on my cell phone, and the officers have access where they can be notified. It's all done. It's all monitored by artificial intelligence computers. Right. So you know that when I read that one, I I, I thought, well, that's that's just unique, and and just not the case. We not only are we a safe town, but I think these cameras certainly provide us with an extra layer of security. Another one. The town's grill is is owned by myself and Mr. Vice Mayor over here. I don't need any more cookers. That's not that's not true. The town owns it, and it's only used for town events when we cook for you know 1,800 plus uh, residents every year uh, for the town barbecue. And there's a couple other events throughout the year that it's used for, amongst other things, as well. All by the town. Uh, one of the craziest ones was that Dan Clark em embezzled $250,000 from the town and the council said, thank you. <laughs> I, I don't, like you hear, when you hear these things, I don't know who would perpetuate this misinformation, but it happens. I don't know why or who's doing it, but it happens. He is not taking, he's not embezzling money. He isn't taking $250,000 at $20,000 a pop. Uh, maybe they're referring to the Blue Way Trail Inc., which is a, a company that was created by actually Mr. Penske here and has multiple people that are a member of their board, including those from Lake Worth Beach and West Palm Beach, because it's a joint effort of these communities to get together to make the Blue Way Trail and this boat lift possible. It was the way to keep this thing moving forward when it hit a bunch of red tape and it looked like it was done. The town has donated thirty thousand dollars to the Blue Way Trail, which successfully got a designation uh, by the state recently as the Blue Way Trail, which is one more step that we need to getting the funding, finding a way to get the county to take over the project and get this boat lift in this portage area done. It's thirty thousand dollars. Again, I don't know where how anybody comes up with these things, but we're doing everything we can to better the town up here, right? We've listened to the residents over the years. We are putting uh, the time and work in to make this town a better place year over year, right? I don't think anyone up on this dais is sufficient, which is being complacent and not growing and not improving, right? Um, they certainly wouldn't want to serve this long, some of these gentlemen, uh, if they just wanted to be complacent. So. You know, it, ultimately, please, 561-644-8845. If you hear any information, even if it sounds the craziest or somewhat plausible, and you're going, well, that's not a town official, call a town official and double check the information. I'm the most accessible person there is. You Google my name, you're gonna find 10 different ways to get a hold of me, right? It's that easy. Like, first result, boom, there I am. You can't, it's, it's so easy to get a hold of everybody up here. There's no reason to sit there and wonder, oh my God, are you can you believe that? Mr. Clark, what are you doing with all that money? You know? Retired? <laughs> <laughs> so just please keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. Would anybody like to add on, on that topic before we move on? No? Yeah. Yeah, I think you got it pretty good there. Okay. So again, the Menorah Lighting, second annual, December 18th. I'm gonna be there, it's gonna be wonderful. Thank you to all the residents and the Young Singers of the Palm Beaches and all the staff and volunteers that came out for the tree lighting and the parade. It was wonderful. I'm telling you, it was so great to see all the residents packed up on our street, receiving all the candy, uh, the residents that were participating in the parade. I think they may have had the most fun of everyone. The joy I saw on some of these kids' faces throwing out candy to everybody and engaging in the holiday cheer was really special. So thank you all very much for coming out for that. Uh, our next town meeting is going to be January 10th. Uh, so please mark your calendars. And let's see here. Um, that's it. Y'all have a happy holiday season and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a Happy New Year. Be safe out there. Remember, tell your loved ones you love them. If you haven't seen them in a while, talked to them in a while, or even if it's been a week, you can be gone too soon sometimes. 
keep that in mind. Be, be safe. Take care. I'll take a motion. All in favor? Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah.